Hi, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in for part three of my crash course in how to read the tarot. Uh, this part is about pulling it all together into a reading. So we've already talked about part one, the hero's or the fool's journey through the major arcana. Part two, we talked about all of the minor arcana cards. In this video, we're going to work with some actual spreads here in real time. And I'm just going to kind of show you how I go through the process as a reader. And anybody can do this. It just takes a little bit of practice. Um, so it's important to keep in mind that, um, you know, this video series that I put together is just a brief overview, kind of giving the framework for how the this works and some really basic general meanings for each of the cards but each of the cards have much more detailed symbolism and meaning behind them and you can find a lot of detail online um, in different websites I'm gonna try to post some links to some of my favorites in the description box below this video but um, you you might find your own as well um, there's also books about this and other tarot card uh, readers on YouTube also provide courses and um, there's lots of great ways to learn about the deeper meanings of each card. Um, so don't feel overwhelmed and like you have to know all the meanings of every card before you can start reading because you really learn as you go. Um, I also wanted to talk really quickly about reversals. So some readers choose to use reversals and some readers don't. And if the readers who do choose to use a reversal, um, the reversal changes the meaning of the card. Um, and there's different ways that can be interpreted. The, the reversal could just slightly change the meaning of the card, so it just sort of weakens the energy a little bit, or it could completely um, make the energy the opposite of what the card's normal energy would be. So if you had um, a Two of Cups upright is about balance and um, an offer of love, if it came out reverse, that would mean oh, there's an imbalance in, in the relationship or um, there is no offer of love being made. Um, so my interpretation as a reader is that if the card comes out reversed, I take it into account, I take it into consideration, but I don't get too hung up on it. I pay more attention to how that card relates to the other cards in the spread. And most importantly, and I really want to emphasize this, I use my intuitive gut feeling. And that's really the key to reading tarot is to tap into your intuition. That's what it's all about. Um, so you, you research and study the meanings of the cards um, and then apply the meanings that really resonate with your own intuition when you're reading for yourself. Um, another key is that you, you want to make sure you keep your questions open-ended because tarot tells a story to your inner child and that's how it works through the story and your subconscious, your inner child um, learns through stories and myths That's and the symbolism. So that's how it works. Um, so you don't use the tarot to like make your decisions for you. You use the tarot to tell a story to your inner child so that you can make a more infor informed decision as a human being. Um, and then another important aspect is um, to be sure to uh, release the outcome. Um, Actually, when I do most of my readings these days, I, I don't really look for the outcome in the spread. Instead of that, I use that final card as more of a guidance card because that's what it's really about. It's not about telling the future. It's about getting guidance on how to handle challenges that might be coming up in our lives. That's how I think of it anyway. 
So it's really important to come up with an open-ended question and to, to meditate and focus on that question while you shuffle. And the question I'm going to ask today, it's pretty heavy, but I think it's been on everyone's mind. And um, I figured that a lot of people might be able to relate to this. And I want to know what, it, what messages the universe has for us about this um, pandemic situation. So, I think about that while we're shuffling. Focus on your question. What messages does the universe have for us regarding the global pandemic? So now I'm going to divide the deck into three stacks. This is just how I like to cut the deck for this and take the middle one. And then as a beginner, I think I'd recommend just flipping from the top of the deck. So we're going to start with a, um, a simple timeline spread and we'll just start with three cards. So past, present, and future. That's how timelines run in tarot readings, from left to right, past, present, future. So for the past, we have the world. For the present, we have the Hierophant. And for the future, we have the Ten of Swords, which did come up reversed. Um, I'm just going to leave it reversed for now so we can read it that way. So the next thing that I do when I flip over the cards is just sort of tune in to the overall energy. I come back to my question. I kind of look at this overall energy that I'm getting. And then once I kind of get that general feeling, um, I'll sometimes make some observations just based on that. So the general vibe that I'm getting is that this is really global and affecting all of our institutions and that um, it's a pretty hard blow, but that there's still hope. So that's really the basic gist of this three card reading. Um, in the past. So the next step after I kind of get that overall feel is I'll take each card one by one and look at its position in the spread. So in the past we have the world card. So this represents completion of a cycle. It can also represent the world itself. Um, endings and new beginnings. And it's a major arcana, it's definitely high impact. So in and in terms of the question that we asked, what do we need to know about this global pandemic? I think it's telling us that, you know, it truly is global and it's affecting everybody. And it's sort of like this new beginning that happened and yet also an ending of a lot of the things that we've known. And then in the present position, we have the Hierophant, and he, he's about lessons and learning, and also about um, structures, like institutions, and he's a five card. So those lessons and learning, if you watched video number two, <laughs> part two, uh, they're about really hard learned lessons. So that's what we're going through right now, a very difficult lesson. And it's affecting all of our institutions and structures. It's basically what I'm getting from this card. And we're having to learn how to restructure 
a lot of our institutions and structures because of this. And in the future position, we have the Ten of Swords. It came out reversed. So when the Ten of Swords comes out reversed, I, you know, the way I interpret that reversal is that it means we're um, going to recover from hitting rock bottom, basically. But I still see it that way, even if it comes up, out upright. It's just that it just changes the energy very slightly for me. As a matter of fact, I've started getting to where I, I pretty much turn all my cards upright and I just take all the different meanings into account, the shadow and the light aspects of each card. So you can see in this card, you know, the sky is dark at the top, but there, the day is breaking on the horizon. And so even though this man's hit rock bottom, he's been stabbed in the back. One part of him has died. There's still hope for another tomorrow. And I think that's a lesson that we're learning. And the other thing with timelines in tarot is that they're very short timelines. Um, they don't go too far back into the past. Usually, I mean, if you do a specific reading about something that happened in the past, then yeah, you can probably get some insight from that. But usually it's just like the, the passing energy, the current energy and the coming energy, but it's coming soon. It's passing recently. That's how I usually interpret it. Okay. Um, so uh, another kind of expansion on that timeline spread is like a five card spread. So it's basically the same thing. I do this sometimes when I'm doing a reading for a friend or for myself where we're looking at um, the week ahead. And for some reason I do five cards instead of seven cards. I don't know why that just seems to um, work better because the cards don't match up to specific days that way. It's just so sort of showing the progression of energy and possible um, challenges and um, opportunities that might come up during the week. So maybe we'll just do a sort of a general reading for how this next week looks for the collective. Um, So let's whip out five cards. Okay. So in this case, the cards are just moving in, that in a timeline from past to present. And they're not really attached to specific days. They're just showing that progression of time. And it could come out that we interpret it differently anyway. Okay. Okay, so Tuning into the energies here. And one thing I'm noticing is a lot of blue in this spread. So you might notice things like that when you kind of get the overall feel for a reading. So blue is associated with the throat chakra, which is about communication. And there's also a lot of water in, in here. So I'm sensing a lot of emotion, even though we don't have too many cups cards other than this first one. I don't know. Um, so we're, we're starting out with the 10 of cups, which is about happiness, fulfillment, that happily ever after. So it looks like the week's off to a great start. And then we come up to the Page of Pentacles, and he's in the reverse, so maybe there's a few concerns about 
um, finances coming up. Um, and the star, which came out in reverse. So the star is about hope, um, wish fulfillment, healing. So I'm sensing that there's maybe a need for that, maybe some self care and love and um, kind of recentering in the middle of the week. Um, especially since it came out reversed, sometimes the reversal means we need to focus on that and bring more of it into our life, more of that energy into our life. And then later in the week, we've got the Two of Swords, which could be an impasse or a communication block or possibly in a, a, a decision that needs to be made that's going to require some careful consideration be weighing the pros and cons and a need to stay calm through that decision-making process and um, towards the end of the week we've got the six of swords so moving to calmer waters so maybe making that decision and moving forward with it okay so in a spread like this I'm reading this and I'm, I still have some questions about what this all means. So you can also draw additional cards for clarification and you can use the same deck that you used to draw the, the original spread or you can also use another deck for clarification which is what I'm going to do and these are my Sailor Jerry playing cards. Um, so uh, these can provide some additional insight too. So I think what I'm going to do is actually uh, draw five more cards to clarify each of these. It's interesting because the first thing that came out was this two of swords which was all over here in the first spread so this um, happy family situation is part uh, is weighing into this decision that needs to be made it's involved somehow um, and then with this page of pentacles, that's clarified by the seven of swords. Um, so that could mean that there's some sort of deception going on or a truth that's going to be uncovered that might be a little unsettling. It could be related to work with the pentacles involved. Maybe a message is going to come through exposing this uh, deception that's happened. It could be a theft um, or it could be just someone's been misleading um, or sneaking around doing things that uh, you weren't aware of. And then um, the star is clarified by this five of cups. So um, again, I think there's a need for healing um, and the need for salvaging what still remains and um, you know cutting your losses but appreciating what you still have and that ties in with that healing aspect of the star and then when we come to the two of swords we have the joker which represents the full card in this deck and um, so that's about a new beginning. Um, and again, you know, the two of swords also came out over here with a 10 of cups. So what I kind of feel here is that the decision is going to have something to do with 
a new beginning and a state. Hi guys, I'm sorry about that. I had a little interruption there. Um, so what I was saying is that um, I feel like since we have the two swords showing up twice, that's really important. And in one place we have it tied in with this happy, stable family situation. And then in another place we have it linked with um, a possible new beginning or new opportunity. So this may indicate a choice between um, your family and the people you love and a new opportunity and trying to weigh how that's going to affect this family situation. And then at the end of the week, we have the Six of Swords, which is moving on to calmer waters clarified by the Seven of Wands. So Seven of Wands is about standing your ground, um, being challenged. So there's going to be a need to, uh, to fight for your stability, perhaps. Um, and that came out reversed, so Maybe there's sort of a, um, it, it could just mean that that energy is a little bit muted, like it may not be an actual fight, it's just that you're recognizing the need to stand your ground and to stay calm. Okay, so the way this is ending is a little bit confusing. I, I know that there is um, a decision that needs to be made and a need to stand your ground and move forward calmly. Um, there's gonna be some challenges perhaps with um, finances or situation at work, maybe some possible deception, maybe a need to um, kind of uh, love yourself and spend some time healing and um, recovering from the heartbreak and loss. And uh, I, I think that it would be good to get a little bit of additional guidance for this reading. So I'm going to ask for one more card for guidance. And the card that came out is Temperance. So this card reminds me a little bit of the star in both cards. The figure has one uh, either partially on solid ground and partially in the water and they have vessels um, she's pouring a vessel onto the earth and another one into the water and in the temperance card the angel is mixing uh, the contents of the two vessels but the water is actually pouring upward so it's like alchemy and they're both about healing and balance. So um, I think that that's the, the advice we're getting here is to stay balanced and focus on healing, um, stay grounded, but still tuned in with your emotions. And just remember everything in moderation. So let's move on to another spread. Called the Celtic Cross. So this is a really classic spread. There's actually instructions for it in a little booklet that came with the Rider Waite deck. Mine's falling apart now, but it, it shows the diagram and how the spread's supposed to work in this booklet. So it's really famous and it's a good way to get an overview of a situation.
all of these readings today, I'm just um, going to lay the cards down from the top of the deck. When I do the readings on my channel, I kind of shuffle for each card because I feel like it's um, got a little more uh, luck behind it when I do that, but it works either way. And you can also just kind of tune into what your intuition's telling you to do. I hope that this is somewhat visible. I'm gonna have to move the, uh, the final card off to the side a little bit so you can see it. Um, so this is the Celtic cross. So we have this yoni shape here or kind of like a shield shape and then the staff shape over the to the side so it's the feminine shape and then the masculine shape um and we're gonna start here at the middle so these two cards represent the heart of the matter um the very first card symbolizes you so we have the fool card that's interesting So maybe um, we're taking our fool's journey. I forgot to say what the question was here. <laughs> um, I think this is just guidance from the universe, general guidance. So um, we have the fool crossed by the Ten of Cups. So this is you encountering what you, you've been wishing for. Your cups are full. And then this card up here symbolizes what's crowning you. So we have the High Priestess. This is your intuition. And beneath, what's beneath the situation is the Page of Swords. So that could be thoughts, communication, perhaps. In the past, we have the Two of Swords. And in the future, we have Five of Pentacles. And when I say past and future, this is the passing energy and this is the coming energy. So it's really recent past, and um, soon to be future. So this is your attitude, the Six of Swords. And then this is in your house, the Knight of Wands, he did come out reversed. In Hopes and Fears, we have the Three of Pentacles. And for final guidance, we have the world. Well, this is an interesting reading for someone out there. Um, and it, I left the question really open-ended, so I hope that you asked a question <laughs> and that this makes sense for you somehow. Um, so I'm gonna tune into the vibration of the cards. I'm definitely sensing that there's something that you are wishing for that you want to manifest and it might be um, something to do with the emotions. Um, I'm seeing more swords represented than any other suit. So you're definitely in thought about this. So we're passing from 
the two of swords to the five of pentacles. So from silence and trying to make a decision, a thoughtful decision to feeling left out in the cold. So I, this almost makes me feel like there's another person involved here, perhaps, like you were hoping to hear from someone and they've been kind of silent and then as time goes on, you're starting to feel like they've left you out in the cold. Or it could be that someone else feels that way about you or that you're doing this to somebody else, potentially. Um, and then the card, the card in this position is what's beneath you. So this is sort of like a supporting energy. This can also be like your subconscious or your inner focus on the situation compared to this, which would be your outward focus on the situation or your consciousness. So, which is interesting because the high priestess actually represents your subconscious, but she's up here in the consciousness position. But it, it looks like outwardly you're tapping into your intuition. This is the energy that you're pro projecting out into the universe and you're trying to make the right decision, but there's still this silence. So, um, and that could also be like your guidance because this is like what crowns you. So this is sort of the highest that you could arrive at. So we're getting quiet and silence here, silence there. And then down here we have the Page of Swords, which is about communication. So maybe you're wanting to reach out, but deciding to remain silent. So I'm definitely feeling that there's another party involved that you're wanting to communicate with, but there's not communication for some reason. And your attitude here is that you're wanting to move on from rough waters to calmer waters and you're in this time of transition and it's difficult but you're moving through it and then we have the knight of wands in your house and he came out reversed so that could indicate that he's showing his shadow side which is sort of like a playboy type of personality like his fires burn bright, but then they die off quickly. He moves in and out of your life really quickly. So this could be you, but it's in your house. So it could also just be the energy of the situation. Um, it could be another person. Um, so that could be this person that you're hoping to hear from, potentially. And perhaps um, there was a lot of passion there and now he's not showing up anymore um, or it could just be the energy of the situation as well so in this hopes and fears card we have the three of pentacles so this is showing me that perhaps you are hoping to build something solid maybe with this person or maybe you just kind of looking to partner and work, um, come together with a team in your life. I'm getting sort of a romantic relationship vibe from this reading. It's kind of turning out that way. Maybe you're fearing that those plans won't come together, at least not with this person. But you're still hoping that you'll be able to build what you're wanting to build and that you're going to get that emotional fulfillment one way or the other with or without this uh, knight of wands and then we have um, the world card so this is the guidance card it can also be the outcome so the world is about completion of cycles 
endings, new beginnings. So it's a great card of hope. Um, and so the guidance here is just to realize that um, when one thing ends, something else begins. And that um, you've got everything going for you. Life's a journey, and um, the journey continues for you. Okay. So I think I'm going to leave it there with just a couple of examples of spreads. Um, you can see more um, spreads that I do on, in different videos on my channel, but that's just basically how I go through the process. Um, I have a few notes here. I'll just kind of go through those to close things out. So the first step when I lay out the cards, just kind of absorb the feeling that I'm getting um, and uh, kind of use my intuition to get a feel for the reading. And then um, the next thing I do is carefully review each card's position in the spread and consider the card's meanings in relation to its place in the spread. So in this Celtic cross, each of these positions has a different meaning. We have um, the first card indicates you, this is what crosses you, this is what crowns you, this is beneath you, this is behind, this lies ahead, this is your attitude, this is your house, these are your hopes and fears, and this is your guidance. So you take into account where that card falls to figure out what it means in the context of the spread. And then we look at how the cards in the spread relate to each other. So I look at uh, above and below, passing to what's coming, um, um, inner and outer, and then um, you can also look at you know, this is what you're feeling deep down, this is your attitude, kind of, and this is your highest good, this is your guidance, so those two things can relate to each other as well. Um, I also sometimes look at how the figures in the card are facing. I didn't really pick up on a lot of that in this particular reading, but sometimes, like, the knights will be facing off against each other or something like that. Um, uh, if there's any pairs, um, like if there's two knights or two pages, or um, if you have a king and a queen, especially with the same suit, that can be significant. And then also I like to see if one suit is heavily represented. So there's a lot of swords in this spread. In some spreads it'll be all one suit. In some spreads it'll be kind of um, uh, a mixture of of suits, but there will be one suit missing, and so you think, oh, well, maybe there's not enough cups in this read, there's not enough emotion here, or something like that. Um, and then, um, also, I look for repeating numbers and symbols. So we didn't have a lot in any of these examples, but we did have in that pat in that last read we had um, the two of swords that showed up twice, so that was significant. Um, so uh, once I've done that and just kind of gone through my intuition and what I already know about the cards, um, after that I'll look in the book or look online for deeper meanings, especially of any cards that I don't understand very thoroughly um, and um, that I'm not as familiar with or if I'm not quite sure why it's showing up in the spread. And I used to do that a lot more. I've been doing this for 10 years now, so now I've got a better feel for how, for all the different meanings of the cards, so it's a little bit more intuitive now. But when you're first starting out, you can go, take this time to go um, look it up online. And if you want, you can even write it in your journal, like what your initial thoughts are about the cards, and then look it up online and add to those thoughts. That's one thing I used to do quite a bit, um, and see if it makes more sense after studying a little a little bit more. 
You can also draw additional cards from the same deck or from another deck for clarification um, to get additional guidance or if you're not quite sure why a card is showing up in your spread. And then um, I mentioned this earlier, but I'm going to say it again. It's also important to release the outcome of the spread. Don't get attached to it. Um, the outcome is flexible. Um, everything in life, um, you know, there may be a little bit of the, um, I don't know, I, there could be soul, some such a thing as a soul contract. Maybe you come here with a mission to fulfill, but it's also um, affected pretty heavily by your free will and choices and the free will and choices of those around you. So everything is flexible. Um, the focus should be on the story and the lessons learned and the guidance provided, the guidance that comes through in the readings. That's what it's really all about. Um, so thank you for tuning in for my crash course in how to read tarot. I'd like to close this out with some oracle cards, which is something else that you can um, incorporate into your readings just to add some extra messages and symbolism. So I'll close out with these goddess inspiration oracles. And with these, I usually like to draw three cards from my goddess deck because um, if you've ever heard of the triple goddess, I think it's kind of cool to get three different goddesses when I pull from here. But a lot of times it seems like four pop out, so I usually aim for three, but I'll take however many come out sometimes. Isis has been coming up a lot for me lately. That's interesting. So we have Isis, the great mother goddess. Your heart will be healed. Have faith. Which is a really nice message to come out after this reading because it sounds like there may have been sort of a difficult romantic situation that's happened here for somebody. And then we have Lazo Tuttle. The filth eater. Look within and be honest with yourself, and then you will be freed. And Amaterasu, shining heaven. She's a sun goddess. You are meant to shine. Go out into the world and reflect light. So I think that's pretty good guidance right there. Um, your heart's going to be healed. Have faith that things are going to get better. Um, don't be afraid of being honest with yourself and working with your shadow side. The tarot cards are really great, a uh, great tool to use to work with those uh, ugly emotions, to work with your filth. <laughs> and um, Amaterasu, you are meant to shine, go out into the world and reflect light. So that's a beautiful message. Find that light within you underneath all that filth and go out into the world and reflect it. Okay, well, thank you for participating in my, my uh, free crash course. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Um, I really appreciate you spending your time here with me, and uh, I hope that you come back for more videos. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.